Yes, I do. It appears we are live, coming to you live from Austin, Texas, on the campus of St. Edwards University uh, in the video game development program. Uh, we are the faculty of the video game development program. I'm Robert Denton Bryant. This is my colleague, Dr. Jeremy Johnson. And we are going to be live streaming uh, Pinball uh, Arcade. We're going to play one of my favorite tables, tables of all time, Fireball from 1972, in honor of National Video Games Day, uh, which is apparently today, um, uh, September 12th. So let's start the game. And I want to play Fireball. We're streaming this, we're playing this on Steam. And... This is a Bally table from 1972. It's much beloved, and it has an Austin, Texas high-end, actually. I'll explain that in a minute. We're going to set this up for two players. Oop, no, three players, two players. Okay. So, let's do this. Jeremy, did you ever play pinball as a kid? Uh, I did a little bit, but... Uh... There was already Pac-Man and uh, all the flashing cool stuff that I got into. I had to discover pinball uh, as an adult, really. But, and having pinballs here in Austin, all those awesome pinball arcades that they have really helped. Right. Pinball is a sort of a local Dave & Buster's. Austin is such a great place to study and make video games because it's such a big culture and there's so many... So much activity. There's a lot of indie activity. That's where you and I met. Yeah. And uh, you know, it's really exciting. Oh, <laughs> that's not exciting. Yeah. I'll drop. Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. All right. Sweet. You there? Yeah. You got it. Okay. Got it. All right. Space bar to the yeah. There you go. Got it. Left to right flipper. Yeah. I uh, I was into pinball before video games. Because I'm from the 70s. Oh, dude. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> so I gotta do this. And uh, I remember when the arcade was mostly pinball and foosball. And then as the years went on, uh, there became more and more and more new video games and fewer and fewer new pinball machines. And there's lots of reasons for that, not the least of which is that pinball, because it's an electromechanical game with all these moving parts and rubber parts that oxidize, yeah. pinball machines broke down a lot. And uh, the video games did not. Um, the, the worst problem with the first video games is that the uh, coin box would fill up and the antenna would have to empty the coin box so you could put it on the coin wow. and they were that <laughs> all right all right all right so what brought you to what got you into video game development jeremy so i guess i've always been into video game development so i started making video games when i was in fourth grade because that was the first time i had access to a computer and so I would make uh, games that my teacher really hated during school, uh -huh. which were horse racing games. Specifically, you didn't actually play the game, but you bet on the horses. Wow. <laughs> so I had a bunch of fourth graders uh, engaged in swapping quarters, which, of course, they were probably going to go use to play video games after school. Right. But yeah, so I did that, and then... Uh, yeah, ever since I've been making some video game or another, uh, regardless of what I was doing with my life. So I had, uh, when I was working as a technical writer at a credit card terminal software company, I made my own Pokemon game on the credit card terminal <laughs> machines. Because <laughs> I had some extra time. Uh but yeah, so I've been I've had video games in my blood since forever. All right, Odin. I've okay. activated the Odin yeah. tunnel. What I love about this game, uh, this table, is it is one of the first with uh, multi-ball, and so you can trap a ball over there in Odin. 
You can trap another ball oh. in a Wolchon hole. Oh, oh, ah, well. oh. <laughs> so much for multi-ball. <laughs> <laughs> multi-ball is usually a lot more exciting than that. Okay, there we go. So I got into video games because they invaded the arcades and, and you know, so I played them in the arcades and then I had an Atari VCS when it came out. And uh, then I went to college. I spent most of the 80s in college and then in graduate school. And so I didn't get a Nintendo uh, like an NES until I was well into my 20s after graduate school. And um, but what made me think about video games as a career was I started playing uh, Warcraft Orcs and Humans by Blizzard Entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I've always been a writer. And I thought that the storytelling in that game, the, the immersive quality of all the little characters that you control, raising your army and sending them to fight the other army, and the cutscenes, which for the time were just amazing. Yeah. I thought that, wow, this, is, this could be a real storytelling medium. And so I lucked into a job as a tester at Mattel, the toy company, when they were doing uh, Barbie and Hot Wheels games. And uh, my career just sort of took off from there. Uh, and I followed a, a very common path um, uh, for testers, which is to uh, learn how to test, learn how to write bugs, learn about the production process, and then I moved into production. And uh, I was a producer and exec producer head of studio where I was uh, green lighting my own stuff. And that's where pinballs come, come back in because I always wanted to make a, a video game that had classic pinball tables in it, like Fireball. I wanted <laughs> to play Fireball again. And so I was in a position where I could green light my own stuff and I found this great developer, oops, Farsight Studios in Big Bear, California. And we were off to the races, and we did uh, uh, our first pinball game together, which was Pinball Hall of Fame in 2004, I want to say, on okay. PlayStation 2, Xbox, and GameCube. And then the Farsight guys have taken the pinball, <laughs> see what I did there, <laughs> and run with it, because they have for years now on... Almost every digital platform you can think of, including mobile, uh, been selling classic tables under the Pinball Arcade brand. Nice. So um, I was just, you know, what I like about video games is that you can come up with an idea which seems crazy, you know, old pinball games from the 70s, and if you work very hard and you have mm -hmm. some luck, you can be live streaming it on Twitch right now. <laughs> um, and that's really cool. Oh. Oh. All right, back to me. I haven't been Is looking this... at the score. <laughs> How I, badly am I beating? I, I think fairly badly. We'll see. we'll see. I do like the way that they've retained the, the score flipping to mm -hmm. count up to the other person's right, right from back whenever it wasn't digitally. You know, right. It's just flipping cards to display. Right. All right. Let's see. So this is the fifth one, right? So I have to do any magic I'm going to do has to happen right now. All five. You know, I think I liked undershooting it because it goes right away and hits that blue thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, the pros learn how to undershoot. You know, when I was a little kid, I thought the harder you uh, <laughs> pulled the plunger back, the better you were going to do. It's more satisfying, yeah, at least in the moment. I was completely wrong. <laughs> I love this table because it's got the spinning rubber mat in the middle. Um, it's see, see, it just carried your ball off the <laughs> table there. It's got multiplayer. It's got the flippers that come together. It's got the, the, the exit lane kicker on the left side. So as a little kid, I found this to be very little kid friendly because there was a lot of tolerance for bad play. <gasps> <You won. laughs> Despite the fact you that my won. first three balls all right. just, <laughs> all right, we're just going, went away. We're going two out of three. That's all there is. All right. All right. We're going two out of three. Do this again. Do I have to set it up again? No, it does not remember two player. Okay, let's do this again. All right. All right. 
right. So why did you, th when you joined our, when you jo uh, <laughs> never mind. Go ahead. Ask me. Go ahead so, and ask. The reason I'm I'm so happy that uh, we're here teaching um, undergraduates uh, the process of game development is that St. Edward's is a uh, liberal arts school and working in video games for years I felt like there was a uh, a surfeit of technical knowledge but right. there wasn't a whole lot of creativity in terms of you know there were a lot of games that only cultural reference and, and seem to be inspired by existing video games right you know and I, w I would have people come into me and pitch a game and say well i want to do ninja gaiden but everybody's left-handed you know there wasn't a whole lot of innovation there yeah. wasn't a whole lot of creativity and i'm a liberal arts guy i have a liberal classic liberal arts education i feel like there's there's so much um you can bring to the video game medium um, expressively from a liberal arts background. You know what I mean? And so what I'm happy is that so many of our majors um, and our minors uh, have interests beyond just video games, although they love video games, but uh, they're able to bring ideas about philosophy or ideas about history or ideas about um, uh, uh, you know, anthropology or any of the things that they learn at the other schools in the university. Right, to have some sort of subject matter and a different take on the same old material. What you said. Yeah, so, so I have, a, I have a, also a liberal arts background and I'm a really big fan. One of the things I really like about the program is that the students get, uh, you're going to play a game like me, where you know, sweep right? it and I get know. it at the end. All right, all right. But I like that the students get their hands in all of it, right? So you're not just getting training to do one particular job. You're getting uh, a good idea of all parts of the process. And I especially think the, the production course is valuable that you've got set up uh, with all your production knowledge, right? The students actually come out of of their program not only with the degree but that they've made a project for a client that they've had to pitch and get approval for and then work in a team uh, so it's really a microcosm of what an actual video game job is which isn't all just fun and fun and telling people what to do you actually have to work for a living you actually have to to fix bugs and wait for the client to approve it and uh play test that's the that's the that's the second most humiliating thing <laughs> to having your ball drop right between your flippers all right here we go uh, but the other thing i'm excited about is we started this year this academic year we started a minor and we have already had a bunch of st edward's students declare for a minor and I thought that they were mostly going to be computer science majors because that's really intuitive and a really good path because if you want to be if you want to be a programmer in the industry um, um, having a background in video games uh, and learning the design and the whole development process on top of learning to code is really valuable but we have majors who have taken the video game minor that are quote from majors like creative writing, uh, business, um, uh, behavioral neuroscience, and you won again. What the heck? <laughs> that was pretty right. much uh, who was embarrassing what themselves the, the least. What the heck? <laughs> All right. You know what? We're going three out of three. All right. <sighs> you know, this live stream may take hours. <laughs> We're going to go until you win. <laughs> no, 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 no. All right. See? Ah. Ah. I feel like I'm I'm, regretting my it. gameplay is rubbing off on I'm you. I'm regretting it's... not having chosen Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. Because <laughs> I was going to, before I, I got pinball or uh, fireball working, ah. I'd rehearsed a couple days ago. <laughs> See, that's, that's karma right there. That, yeah. With the pinball 
uh, table of Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, and that was really amazing because that was a pinball game based on a movie, based on a book that starred Robert De Niro. I had a little plastic Robert De Niro as Frankenstein's monster up at the head of the table. But I'm glad we chose Fireball because it's awesome. But also, I liked the 70s tables. I like the 60s and 70s tables because they're simpler. I can see what's going on. I know what my goals are, and I know what I'm supposed to do. doesn't mean I do it, but I know what I'm supposed to do. And to my mind, pinball tables, pinball design got junkier and junkier in the 80s, and especially in the 90s with all of the, the, the big plastic pieces and the little dot matrix kind of thing. Look at this. Wow. Uh, two balls shot. in the out. I've never had that happen before. Um, they got more and more complex because they were competing in the arcade side by side with the video games, right? Right. And it started having like little video games that you can play. Had little the... dot matrix things, right, <laughs> yeah. on the uh, on the back glass, and it, it just it was just junky to me. I never really enjoyed uh, pinball design after, say, the mid '80s. Got to keep hitting that blue thing. That's the. Yeah, keep your <laughs> keep your flippers closed. Yeah, that's what my mom always said. Right. Uh, I like the little the little spinning rubber mat in the middle because it turns it even if you're having a sort of lackadaisical turn. It right. juice it up a little. It jukes it. Well, this game actually has, this fireball table actually has an Austin Yee! connection. Uh, so one of our Austin-based filmmakers is Richard Linklater. And his movie, Dazed and Confused, um, the, the, remember there's uh, a couple of scenes in an arcade where all the kids hang out at night. Yeah. And that sequence begins with... Um, on a fireball table the camera is close up on the, the the playing field and when i saw that in the theater saw it was fireball i'm like this is the best movie in the history of movies <laughs> and then it also yeah. turned out to be <laughs> and then link ladder's character himself i think plays a pinball game uh plays fireball in uh, waking life which was one of his experimental uh was it Waking Life or was it Standard Arkley? One of those. I yeah. think Waking Life. So we know that Link Ladder is a fan of this table. Ooh. Richard, if you're walking <laughs> watching, thank you. Okay. All right. It's a stream, so I'm supposed to chatter, but I'm kind of, <laughs> focu kind of focused. All right, <laughs> I trapped Odin. Odin. Uh, I'm disappointed. Stuff. I had two balls in the lane there, and I got nothing. I still lost. I should get a special reward just for getting multi-ball. See? There we go. <laughs> there we go. When you talk about Linkletter being an Austin person, it's really awesome to do game development in Austin because it's such a huge scene. Uh, not only a lot of game companies, but the indie scene, which is what I came out of, right. is super lively. I just had, and then the St. Ed's kids are really buying into that, in that I just went to Huegos Rancheros, which is uh, the big monthly indie event, one of many uh, that happens here in Austin. But uh, Indie development? Indie development. Uh, game development. So there was a whole bunch of games on display. Some from a lot from Austin. Some from South Africa was the wow. Was the indie? Yeah. They have a good indie dev scene there too. They, I think they they went all the way, they brought their games all the way from <laughs> South Africa yeah. to, to Austin. That's awesome. Yeah, but the nice thing was that there were the the majority of students that were there were from Saint Ed. Oh, that's so. great. No, no, yeah. There, there's it's really great for our students to be able to have so many networking opportunities with potential employers obviously but also with other independent developers you know yeah. um 
because they get there's opportunities for them to help out you know because every indie developer is always looking for play testers and very often bug testers yeah on top of that there's you know just having these events you know anyone can bring their game so mm -hmm. if our students have games that they want to show off they can be showing them to people that might be interested in buying them that's true or at least getting free you know right. play testing if nothing else right all right this is where i have to Ooh, that was I'm just gonna spend this whole game on the mat in the middle, right. freaking myself out. That's the best part. Oh, oh! I hadn't done that yet. A uh, kicker? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it saves you. Again. <laughs> up, up, multi-ball. Actually, yep. Yeah. Oh, did that shoot that by itself? No, I, I did it. Okay. I just, right. I just oh, had to wow. focus for a second to. <laughs> to to use my thumb and my finger at the same time. Oh! oh. All right. Oh, what is new this? You got a You player one. Player one, new high score. That's oh. me. What? 39,000. Bob. No bad words. Bob, no. Uh, Bob, boss. No, no, no. <laughs> Bob. That blue is really dark. Yeah. <laughs> Wee! Hey, look at that. How about that? Bob, hot Bob. 39,000 to 25. All right, we finally figured out how to <laughs> play the game. Okay, I think that's, I think we're almost done. Um, so once again, I'm uh, Robert N. Bryant. This is Dr. J uh, Jeremy Johnson. We're on the video game development faculty uh, here at St. Edwards University in Austin, Texas. And you can see below the screen here, you, we've got hooks to our Facebook page. You can follow the program. You can contact us directly with questions. We'd love to hear from you. Enjoy the rest of National Video Game Day. Peace out. Aloha.